Hello everyone, Pastor Don Sullivan here. Thank you for checking out uh, our past sermons and other resources. I hope that as you watch this sermon or use the resource we've made available, you'll be encouraged and blessed along with your belonging to your local church family. If you find these helpful, I hope you'll consider giving to Redemption Church right here on our website. Again, pray that you are blessed and strengthened in your relationship with your loving Heavenly Father through Jesus Christ, led by the Holy Spirit. Well, Merry Christmas. There we go. Hey, we're ready for that one. Josh kind of warmed you up. Now you're ready for me. Man, what a great night. Thank you for uh, a, a afternoon, evening. We do it early so that families can still go do their traditional Christmas Eve things and kind of throws me off, right? So um, thank you for joining us. Thank you for uh, joining us here on campus or online and celebrating the birth of Emmanuel, Prince of Peace, Almighty God, Wonderful Counselor, Everlasting Father. I see that there's a lot of kids in the room, and like we do when I know we're going to have a bunch of kids in the room, I've got some Christmas-themed jokes for you guys. Are you ready? A couple of these are really funny. All right, here we go. Ready? What is a Christmas tree's favorite candy? Ornaments. All right? Now, these are the next two. I think they're hilarious, and it shows you a little bit of my mean sense of humor. What do you call an elf wearing earmuffs? Anything you want, he can't hear you. <laughs> this is my favorite. You ready? What do you call an old snowman? Water. <laughs> Aren't those great? Those are great. I love that joke, all right? So, kids, we love you. Make sure that you get your uh, uh, Christmas presents over there. Someone will hand them out. We've got some for littles and then we've got some for older kids. As we couldn't do the whole cookie decorating Chris, uh, hot chocolate stuff like we normally do. So we still wanted to give our kids something because we love you and, and we just want you to have a great Christmas. Now, if you've been here the last four weeks, we've been talking about these names that God the Father gives to his promised Messiah child. Names, uh, these names are Wonderful Counselor, Almighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. And so for the last four weeks, we've been studying these names, okay? And if you remember, things were going really bad for Isaiah and the nation of Judah, for God's people, and they were being attacked by a very powerful enemy called the Assyrians. But worst of all, they'd been ignoring God's commands for them. They'd been disobeying God. They'd started worshiping fake gods and fallen away from their relationship with God. So in the middle of all this chaos and all this turmoil of, of spiritual failure and upheaval and of being attacked by a more powerful nation, living under the threat of losing everything they knew and held dear, God does an amazing, loving thing for His people. God promises to send a child who will rescue them and save them. And most importantly, this child will lead them back to their one true God. And so we've learned that this child, given by God, God names this child, Wonderful Counselor, Almighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And so these names, as we've talked about, they tell us not just who this Messiah is, they also tell us what this Messiah will do. As your Wonderful Counselor, He will have all the wisdom, all the experience, all the knowledge to guide you through your most difficult situations in seasons. As your wonderful counselor, he has the perfect plan for you. And then we have, he will have complete power that he needs to deliver you to put that plan into action and to see that plan succeed because he is your almighty God. And not only that, he has the perfect wisdom and knowledge and experience and the perfect, complete and all power and authority. As your everlasting father, he loves you. He wants a relationship with you. So this promised Messiah, you don't have to go find him. He will come to you. He won't sit back and wait for you to come to him. He loves you too much for that. So he'll close the gap between you and God and come to you. We talked about as your everlasting father, he is proud of you. He rejoices over you. And in that relationship of love and closeness, using His wisdom and power and His peace uh, and His authority, He will bring perfect peace. He will calm your heart and mind. We talked about the opposite of peace is fear. And the Prince of Peace will take away your fears, bring you God's peace, God's shalom, and make you complete and whole again. 
Well, tonight on this beautiful Christmas Eve, we're going to look at one last name together. It wasn't in this list. It actually comes before this list. And this name takes these four great names and puts them all together. This name makes all these four great names and makes them powerful and real in your life. Think about it for a second. It's one thing for God to call his promised Messiah, wonderful counselor, almighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. You go, wow, this is the promised Messiah sent from God. Those are all divine God sounding things. Okay, that makes sense. That, that makes sense to everybody. That's one thing to give him those names. But this last name, no one was ready for. This last name was unlike any other name. It communicated so much about who God was and who God was to them specifically. But before we get to that, we need to talk about what's going on because we have to understand the promise. We have to understand what's going on. So the great, terrible, horrible, evil kingdom of Assyria, the empire is growing. And so the evil kings, the bad kings of Israel and Syria, they want to form an alliance against this Assyrian uh, uh, empire. So what they do is these two evil kings, they go to King Ahaz, the king of the southern kingdom of Judah, and they say, hey, come join us. We're going to form an alliance. And maybe if we're lucky, the three of our armies combined, we can hold off Assyria. But Ahaz, King Ahaz, who is an evil, wicked king himself, doesn't, want, doesn't sure what he wants to do. He vacillates, which frustrates, as he kind of flips-flops, it frustrates the other two kings of Israel and Assyria. And so they make this plan. We're going to invade Judah. We're going to knock Ahaz off the throne, meaning they're going to kill him. And we're going to put one of our sons on the throne so that that son, this new puppet king, will lead Judah to join us against Assyria. So at this point... God sends the great prophet Isaiah to tell King Ahaz to give him a promise. And God says, Ahaz, you don't know me. You're far from me. You have chosen to rebel against me. But I want to tell you, because I love my people, I love my kingdom of Judah, I'm going to deliver you. I'm going to deliver Judah from Israel and Syria. Right? Now, think about this for a second. In dark days, in confusing days, in days of loneliness and pain, how many of you have ever asked God, for a sign. For a sign that just said, God, just show me something that you're there, that you care. I don't, I don't need the world. I just need something because things are going really hard. I know I have. I think most of us have asked God for a sign. I've never really gotten one. At least I don't think I, I did. I might have missed it. But that's what... I, it, God does something I, well, I've never experienced. I'm not sure anybody has. He actually approaches Ahaz and says, listen, so that you believe me because you don't know me. You're a wicked, evil king, but I want you to believe me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep my promise. Demand a sign from me. God actually tells Ahaz to demand a sign from, a sign from him. And in verse 10, chapter 7, verse 10, uh, uh, God says, you can demand, there is no limit. He says, as deep as Sheol, which is kind of the, the Jewish concept, the Hebrew concept of, uh, of everlasting punishment in hell, or as high as the heavens, you can demand anything you want, and I'll show you. I'll give you that sign. No limits. You can ask for the, whatever sign you want. Now, if God told you that, what would you do? The question wouldn't be, do I or do I not? The question would be, what sign do I ask for? But that's not what Ahaz does. Ahaz hears that from Isaiah, and he kind of tells Isaiah, he tells God, mm, no thanks, I'm good. Don't want one. Don't need one. Not going to listen to you anyway. It has actually turns God down. But God is so committed to rescuing this tiny little kingdom of Judah that he tells Isaiah, listen, give Ahaz a sign anyway. Give him a sign anyway. And here's the sign. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Okay, Ahaz, here's your sign. You didn't want one. God's going to give you one anyway because he's a good, merciful God. Here's the sign. A virgin will have a son, a boy child. Now, that's a pretty powerful sign by itself, right? I mean, that's a pretty powerful sign. Clearly something only God could do. But honestly, that's not the most amazing part of this promise. It's the boy's name that nobody was ready for. The name Emmanuel. 
The name Emmanuel, it's just no one would, ex- would understand or expect uh, 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 the idea that God would promise to be with them no matter what. Emmanuel combines two Hebrew words, El, God, and Imanu, with us. But it's so much more than a name. We have to see this name, Emmanuel, as a promise. God tells King Ahaz, no, no better than that, God promises King Ahaz, you're not alone. I'm with you. Even when the armies of your enemies are at the city gates, I will be with you. What kind of promise is that? I think at Christmas time we hear that name and we just kind of, it's so out there, it's so powerful, we don't even know what to do with it. We get confused and it's, we want to believe it, but sometimes we just feel like it's so far away. There was a little boy who was talking to his mother and he was staring at the sky, just staring at the sky. And his mom looked at him and said, what are you doing? He said, mom, is God really up there? And mom said, well, yes, of course. The boy thought about it for a minute and said, man, it sure would be nice if he'd stick his head out once in a while. Isn't that how we feel sometimes? I think most of us have been there. But God says, I will send the wonderful counselor, Prince of Peace, everlasting Father, Almighty God. But before that, what makes all that work for you is God's promise of Emmanuel. That not He'll do all those things because He wants to be with you. God with you. So what does that mean for us here in Gillette? Yes, in Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, God makes this promise to Ahaz. But then the promise is repeated in Matthew, word for word, I will, a, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel. God reminds his people, God reminds you and me that Christmas is the promise to be with you no matter what. So what does that mean for us? There's some really powerful things that this name Emmanuel means. Remember, Ahaz was an icked, a wicked, evil king. And God still makes that promise. So one of the things we see is that Emmanuel means God's promises do not depend on you. God is going to do what God is going to do. God is going to keep his promises because he's God. He, he can't lie. He can't deceive. He can't break his promises. He's good. He's faithful. He's righteous. Let me say it this way really bluntly. You can't make your mistakes, your sins, you can't make God break his promise to be with you. Nothing you can do will break God's promise to be with you. It doesn't depend on you. God keeps his promises. It means that, Emmanuel means that God promises to be with you no matter what. So the way uh, Isaiah reads is Ahaz, it kind of reads like Ahaz is in the castle or in the palace hiding when God sends Isaiah. The armies are on the move. The situation had gotten beyond anything Ahaz could ever hope to probably survive, let alone win. But what we have to see is God comes in that dark moment, that dark hour, and says, I promise to be with you. God doesn't look at the armies on the move and go, whoops, never mind. I take it back. I didn't know the armies were coming. I didn't know this thing was going to happen in your life. I didn't know this storm was going to break you down. Sorry. I didn't see how bad things were going to be. What you need to know right now is circumstances, suffering, pain, storms, can't make God break his promise to be with you. In fact, that's the point of God's promises. They mean the most. God's promises have the most power. God's promises give you the most hope in the middle of pain and suffering. Because we know that God will never bug out when things go bad. God does not have a bug out bag for you in your life. He promises to be with you no matter what. So you can't make God break his promise. Circumstances can't make God break his promise. And Emmanuel means, most importantly, that you and I, we really can know God. That's so important. 
God comes to us to be with us. We can know God's wisdom. We can know God's forgiveness because Jesus, Emmanuel, was born. And because he was born, you can be forgiven for all the sins and mistakes you've ever made. There's a verse in John chapter, the Gospel of John chapter 14. And Jesus is teaching his disciples and, and this uh, disciple Philip gets a little frustrated and, and says to Jesus, Philip, Lord, show us the Father. Show us God and that will be enough for us. And Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long that you still don't know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. Philip asks, Jesus, show us God. Missing the point. And Jesus kind of says, you don't get it yet, do you? If you've seen me, you've seen God. Philip, what you need to know, right now what you need to know in this room or online is God is here with you because Jesus was born. God is here with you because of Christmas. You and I can know and see God because we can know and see Jesus because of Christmas. Jesus was born on Christmas with the names Wonderful Counselor, Almighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, Emmanuel, God with you. But for those names to have any meaning, any power, for you to know the hope and the peace and the love and the joy of Christ this Christmas, you must know and receive Christ. You you have to know what to call him. So my phone rings. And I answer it. And the person on the other line says, Mr. Sullivan, I'd like to talk to you about your car's warranty. Or the IRS is after you, Mr. Sullivan. Or there's a problem with your social security check, Mr. Sullivan. Or pick it, right? But when someone starts the phone call, Mr. Sullivan, what do I instantly know? They don't know me. I'm looking around the room and I'm not sure any of you have ever called me Mr. Sullivan. And I'm totally cool with that. Right? Don't call me Mr. Sullivan. Because I'll start looking for my grandpa. All right? But the phone rings. Someone calls me Donnie. And I instantly know that it's an old childhood friend. Because nobody in Gillette, Colorado, every place I've gone since I was a kid in Montana, nobody calls me Donnie. But my old childhood friends, they still do. My brothers, my my mom and dad still do. And that's okay. You don't get to, by the way. No, I'm just kidding. I don't care. But the phone rings and I pick it up. And I hear, husband? I know instantly who that is. There's only one person in the world, one person on the planet, who gets to call me that. And it's my wife. See, the name you call a person, think about your relationships. The name you call a person tells you a lot about that relationship, doesn't it? So Jesus was walking. He'd been teaching and doing miracles in in Mark chapter 8. And and he's asking Jesus, you got to picture this. He's walking down the road with his disciples. and He says, hey, hey guys, hey disciples, I'm curious. What's going on out there? What's the buzz? What's the buzz about what we're doing out there? What are people calling me out there? And they answer this question, well, some people say this, other people say this. Really, Jesus, they're still trying to figure out they don't know what to call you. They don't know your name. And Jesus looks and says, that's fine. Here's the question you've got to answer. Is who do you say that I am? doesn't matter what everybody else out there says, calls me. I want to know, guys, who you say I am. The most important question anyone could ever ask. So right here, right now, as we talk about all these names for the past few weeks, you gotta, I, I want to ask you this. What do you call Jesus? Do you call Jesus Wonderful Counselor, Almighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace? Do you believe that Jesus is your Emmanuel, your God with you? See, we're about to light the candles you picked up on the way in. And if you need a candle, uh, raise your hand. Someone will bring you one if you forgot to grab one. But we're about to light these candles. We're going to shut the lights off. We're going to sing Silent Night together. And we're going to worship Jesus, who was born into humanity's darkness to bring his light and salvation to everyone. But not everyone receives the light. Not everyone receives Jesus, do they? But right here, right now, online, here you can. You can know 
Jesus. You can know the power of Emmanuel, God, with you. And if you, right now, there's something in you saying, I need to know this. I want you to pray this prayer with me. Pray it in your own heart and mind, here in the room or online. Pray with me. Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner and I need God to forgive me. And I believe that because you were born to take away my sins, God will forgive me if I just ask. So God, forgive me for my sins. Jesus, I accept you as my wonderful counselor, almighty God, everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. And Jesus, from now on, you will be my Savior and King. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, let me know. I'd love to talk to you about what that means uh, for you and the power in your life, Jesus, uh, in you now, and what it means to be a new creation in Christ. So here's what we're going to do. The band's, uh, band's going to come back up. The guys are going to, whoever's lighting candles, you're going to light your candle. And here's the instructions, okay? We're going to start at the end, and we're going to work your way down. If you've got a candle, the lit candle stays vertical, right? Because what happens if you do this to light the other candle, all right? So the lit candle stays vertical. The unlit candle, dip it. And while you're getting your candles lit, we're going to sing Silent Night, and then we'll sing it together. And you see what I just did? This white candle here is the Christ candle. And Christ comes and is the light of the world. And the way that works is we light our candle and bring a little bit more light. And we let the light of Christ flow through us and we light other people's candle. So stand.